welcome back. And part of this roast series, I'm gonna show you how to do the humble chicken. Now this is the way that I've been taught, it's the way that my mother's taught me, it's the way that I've learned at culinary school, and it's also the way that I like to cook this at home. First things first, you need to get a really good quality chicken. Now I can't stress this enough, it's so important getting a good value, good quality chicken because you're going to get more for your money. In this video, I'm going to show you how to perfectly roast this chicken, make a ch the ultimate chicken gravy, and also, why not, I'm gonna throw in a stuffing recipe in there because everyone loves a good stuffing. <laughs> One banana shallot. I'm just gonna finely dice it. Grab a small saucepan. I'm just going to melt a little bit of butter to cook the shallots. So in the meantime, while that's melting, I'm going to peel one Bramley apple. Got some fresh thyme from the garden. It's important you get all the leaves off because you don't want to get a little bit of sprig in the stuffing. We're just gonna give it a rough chop and then we're gonna add it to the shallots. Our shallots are now really nicely sauteed in that butter. We've taken all that raw edge off. We're just gonna let those cool down a little bit and then we're going to add it to the stuffing, so the sausage meat. So in this sausage meat, we wanna season it with a little bit of nutmeg, black pepper, give a pinch of salt. And then we want to grab a food processor. We're going to cut up the apple, take the core out, to roughly chop this up. So it's all going to go into the food processor. Now this apple is going to give it a real lovely sweetness to the stuffing. I'm going to add in the shallots and give it all a good blend. Now you can add a little bit of egg to help it all bind. Now if you find it's on a little bit on the wet side, just fold in some breadcrumbs and this will also add to the texture. Now with stuffing, you could also add in like livers or any offal. I love to use chicken livers in mine, but I didn't, couldn't find any in the butchers today. Now you can make this into little balls, roast them with the chicken. But what I'm going to do with this stuffing is literally stuff the bird with it. So I'm just gonna put this aside now. So next part, let's prepare the chicken. Now I've got a couple of birds here just to show you sort of the difference in quality you can get with chickens. These are both free range and they're both organic. Um, this one I got from a farmer's from Suffolk, so it's Sutton Hoo. I put the details in the description. You look at the size of the legs and the breasts on this chicken. Color of the meat, it just looks the part. And I know that you're going to get a good quality roast chicken out of this. This one's got good big breasts. This one I got from the local supermarket, much, much pinker. These were actually the same cost, would you believe? much smaller breast. Again, it was free range organic chicken, but I know I'm going to get the best product using this one, which I got from my local butchers. So if you can afford it and you can source it, definitely try and go for the local farm one over a supermarket brand one. Okay. I'm gonna save that other chicken for a rotisserie chicken. I think that one's gonna need a lot more flavoring. This one I have dry, so I've seasoned it with salt and then left that in the fridge overnight and I've just given it a rinse and then I let it air dry in the fridge for a few good few hours and taken it out of the fridge for 45 minutes before I cook it. That's so that the meat comes to more of a room temperature and cooks a lot more evenly. So what I need to do now is just give it an oiling, give it a season again and then I'm gonna stuff the bird with our stuffing that we just made. Now, if I had extra time, I would make maybe like a garlic herb butter that I would put under the skin of the chicken just to give it a lot more flavor as it cooks. But I bet you this chicken's not gonna need much flavoring at all. Give a good generous rub all over, inside and out with salt. I always seem to do this and I'm glad I stopped myself. I need to take out the wishbone. And what you wanna do is just from the, the sort of the neck area here, You'll see the wishbone, you could be able to feel it if you just put your hands there. And it's like a little V. So you just wanna get a sharp knife and just either side of that little bone that you could feel, just make a small insert around that V bone, the wishbone. And what it'll do, that bone will meet at this top point here. So what I like to do, put your hands in between and just simply pull it out. So I remove the giblets from the inside of the chicken that normally comes with this. I'm just going to roast all of those for the gravy. All right, my hands were washed. So wishbone's being removed and that's important because when we come to carving the chicken later, it's just going to make our lives so much easier and getting a nice clean cut off the breast. Now it's time for the important part. Just check the inside of the bird that there's no, there's no remaining giblets and we're gonna give it good stuffing. Wetting my hands. 
so it doesn't stick to my hands. Now I'm not putting a huge amount of the stuffing in there only because then it would just take quite a long time to cook. Just enough that I fill that cavity. I'm gonna save the rest of that stuffing into a bag and probably freeze it for next time. Like with every large bird, a good rack is really, really valuable because this is gonna help the bird cook really nice and evenly. So what I'm gonna prepare underneath the chicken is a gravy. And to do that, you're going to want to have some vegetables like onions, carrots, celery, garlic. Um, I had some leftover shallot there from doing the stuffing. Cut my garlic bulb in half, that goes in. Quarter the onions, skin on and everything. Some cut carrots from earlier. So if you don't have a rack like this, the vegetables will basically act as your rack. So that again, helps cook the chicken a bit more evenly. And also when that chicken releases all its lovely juices, it's going to cook the vegetables to help provide a great base for your gravy. Right, let's add in some celery. Got some washed celery from a dish I did before. Add that at the bottom. A little bit of thyme, some bay leaves. God, these are dry. Let's go for another good measure, another bit of clove garlic. And we've got the giblets that I reserved from the inside of the chicken. That's gonna go in at the bottom. A little swig. We picked some rosemary from the garden. I can't forget that. Chicken and rosemary. Right, so this is ready to go in the oven. So I preheated the oven at 220 degrees centigrade or what 200 degrees fan. Um, and we're going to roast this on that high temperature for 30 minutes to get a really good color. So chicken's in the oven, it's got the stuffing in. Now it's up to make the gravy. Now I had some, oh, that's hot. I had some turkey bones left over and I've chopped them up. I've given them really good roasting. They were already cooked, but I'm just gonna give them a good color. So that's been in the oven at 200 degrees until they had a really nice brown color all over it. Look at the size of this carcass. It's one big bird. If you didn't have a turkey carcass, you can also just get some chicken wings and give them a really good color in the oven and then put them into a pan with some water over it to make your stock base. Now there's a lot of oil and fat in the bottom of this, so I'm going to just skim that off. So I've got like one of these little pots, it's got like a little filter, so I can actually reuse that oil or fat for another dish. Now at the bottom of this tray, there'll be loads of like what we call fonds. So it's where the meat has basically created this brown caramelization on the tray but we want to keep that because there's going to be tons of flavor in there. I'm gently heating up that pan and I'm going to deglaze it with some white wine. Just with a spatula, I'm just going to scrape off any of those fonds from the bottom of the tray. Ooh, careful, squirter. I scraped off every bit of fonds I could off that base and that's just going to go in over our chicken like so, or I should say turkey. I'm now going to cover this with a good amount of water um, up to about here, just covering all that chicken, and I'm gonna let it simmer away to create a really rich chicken stock. Now, not all of us have got time to roast chicken and roast wings, so you can just use shop-bought chicken stock or a stock cube, there's nothing wrong with that. It's just I had these spare, I'm going to use them up. Can't get a turkey to fit in there. <laughs> so that stock is just gonna to come to a gentle simmer and it's going to gently boil this carcass to get a real meaty stock. Um, once it has, I'm gonna skim it just to get remove any sort of extra fat off the top, and then I'm gonna add in the mirepoix from the roast chicken. Um, you can even add in some roasted carrots, onion, garlic into there directly. I absolutely love, as a trick, to make gravy in a big batch and then freeze it in like ice cubes because making gravy is quite a long process, as you can see, and having it just readily available in your freezer just takes up so much stress when it comes to room roast dinners. And so I highly recommend you make a big batch of the stock and then the gravy. 
and then it's just like job's done. The bread's come out of the oven and it's reached, I probed it in the thickest part, so just about the leg here and in the breast and it's at 73 degrees, so it's perfect to come out. You could actually bring it out a little earlier and what we'll do is let it rest and it'll still finish cooking through. I'm just actually gonna leave that like there and cover it with some foil to keep that heat in. Now, we've got this pan here of all of our lovely the giblets all roasted. You see the garlic is just all squishy. This is perfect to go into the stock now. See that gravy, it's squishy. And that's gonna go in here now. And this has been ticking along for about a couple of hours now. So it's got a real nice richness smell. This carcass is breaking up nicely. I'm just giving it, give it a little squeeze so that we get all of that bone and flavor off into the stock. Oh, gorgeous. Next up, I'm gonna put all of that into here. Again, making sure that you're scraping off any of that funds, any sauce right into there. Now, if you want, you can put this into a pressure cooker to speed up the amount of time it takes to cook. I'm just gonna do that really nice and low and slow because I'm not in a rush for that. So just covering up the bird. And I'm making sure that when putting, I'm resting the bird on a large plate or a platter or a roasting uh, sort of a carving tray like this because it's gonna have a lot of juices that come out of it and we wanna keep those juices for the stock. To finish up the gravy, we'll have our stock and we're just now reducing it even more. So I've set some aside here. You wanna come have a look? Right, so I've got some chicken stock here and I'm just reducing it even lower. Now to finish this, I'm going to make it, I want to make it nice and thick. So I'm going to make a roux. How do you make a roux, I hear you say? Well, really, really simple. It's butter, flour, and a liquid. So in this case, we're gonna use the stock or you could use white wine, or if you've been really fancy, like a Madeira or a fortified wine. But I'm just gonna use butter, flour, and then whisking it into the gravy. And that's gonna help thicken and make it really rich and umptuous, that it coats every part of that roast chicken. And then you really don't need a lot of roux, so I'm just gonna use about a tablespoon of butter. Right, add a bit of flour to that. It's two teaspoons. You're gonna to wanna to cook this out for a couple of minutes, just so you get rid of that raw flour flavor. Now we're gonna add in some of our reduced stock. That is pretty much it. We've got the gravy just coming to a gentle simmer so it's thickening nicely. I've added in the stock really gradually until I get that right consistency that I'm after. I'm just gonna wait for it to come to a gentle simmer so that I can see the true consistency after I've added that roux and the gravy together. And that is looking rather luscious. You could even add in, at the, if you wanted, a little bit of tomato, if you wanted a really, tomato paste, if you wanted a really, really rich tomato-y kind of flavor, like a brown stock. But what we've got here is a perfect white gravy to go for our chicken, roast chicken now. And that's pretty much ready to serve. We'll start plating up. That looks like a pretty bird. Still pretty hot, even though it's been resting there for about 10 minutes, 20 minutes. All of this juice, ah, uh, I'm going to carefully and put that back into my gravy or stock. Here's the gravy that I have added the roux and it's just simmered away. Now, if you want it something a little bit more acidic, I can recommend you can add a gastrique, which is like a reduced vinegar mixture to add a little bit of acidity, or you can just add a little squeeze of lemon. It really freshens it up. That is our perfect gravy with a perfectly roasted chicken with extra stuffing, which I cannot wait to tuck into. Now, who wants a video on how to carve this thing? Should we crack this bird open? As you can see from our windows, it is nighttime, it is dinner time, and I better start carving because everyone I can hear is getting hungry. I certainly am. This house smells incredible from this chicken smell. Do give this recipe a go. All the details will be on my blog, on my website, in the description. And I really hope you enjoy making this at home. I certainly do. It's one of those dishes that we do every single fortnight or so because we get so much out of the humble chicken and this is a really delicious way of cooking it. So give it a go, leave us a comment, hit the subscribe button if you like this video and give us a good thumbs up 
And I'll see you guys next week for another episode. See ya. Say it again, but I'm filming from this angle. Oh my god, am I supposed to say that entire thing again? Um. Mmm. Uh, all the all the kids are in now. So there we have it. This breast is beautifully delicious. I'm being pulled both directions by both kids. Better go serve this up. So I'll catch you again next week.